Welcome to another Tableau tutorial video. I'm Weston Palmer. Let's get started. But first, a thank you to my Patreon supporters. I love the interaction and feedback. So today I'm going to show you how using parameters and set parameter dashboard action, you can get create a dashboard where you can down select to a particular item and then show all the data again. Rather than with just the filter function where you're stuck on just that item, this is going to allow you to show all the items after you deselect, after you clear the selection. Now, one of the first things, as always, is structuring your data correctly. I'm going to come look at the data source. And I've already created a clean data source for this demo that has the price change already calculated in here. It's got the price, the previous price, and then calculated the price change. If you try and calculate this using a table calculation, it's not going to work because you need to have each row needs to have this price change. So this you can do this in Tableau Prep. You could probably do this in Tableau Desktop, uh, joining data sets upon themselves. Now that we're at the dashboard, what you're looking at here is this is the price change over time, and this is the quantity uh, that changes. So in this case, we had a zero to 50% increase. There was one item. This has two of those items. And looking at the price change chart, there is, you just have the month and the count of the item and then the color. It doesn't have the item itself. What I want to be able to do is select because it's kind of messy. And if you had more data points, it would be even uh, more items it would be even messier. What I want to be able to do is select here and see that price change for that part. One of the things that you start with is you say, okay, well, I'm going to filter on using this chart. Problem is when you filter, you only see the one data point for that month. And you only, because you only see one of those months. You could come in here to actions on the dashboard actions. Here's the filter here. Let's come and edit that. We're going to, we only want it to chart, target the price chart. We want selected values and let's just say price bucket. Bucket, there we go. And so when we select this, it gives us uh some things that have some price changes uh, this has two items but this is showing four items it's i don't know what it's showing but it's not what we want so let's let's turn this off let's get rid of that and the, the way we do this is we're going to be using parameters we come to the price change and I've created two parameters. One is for the selected month. And it's a date. We're going to let all values. The other one is the selected price change. It's a string starting off at no change. We're going to have a list. It's limited. And when the workbook opens, it's going to be whatever this price change bucket is. And you can see the values there. The price change bucket, just so you see it. It's a pretty simple if then statement. I mean, you've done these before to create groups and sets. Depending on what the price change is. Oh, it's misspelled. I'm going to leave that because otherwise it's going to screw up the colors and everything. Uh, show the parameter. What I want to do is I'm going to come to the dashboard. I'm going to set, you know, if you can tell somebody, tell me how to make this the default. I would love that. I don't want to see all of them, the actions for the workbook. So here are the set parameter actions. Just giving it a name. When we select on the price change, we're going to select the month. 
um, source field is a month. Click OK. Now we're going to do the price bucket. Same thing, we're going to change it for the price change. We're going to set it equal to the price change bucket. And now as we select the different items, you can see down here, we selected February 1st, 2024, no change. 11, 20, 11, 1, 2023, 10% decrease. Now that we have these items, we can use that in a filter. Let's come to the price change. And I've created a calculated field over here. You know, this is a fixed function because we were looking at the item level. We want this to return a value so that we're showing not just one data point. We want the entire item to show up. And what we do is inside this, the if statement, if then statement says, if it's the selected month and it's the selected price change, right? If that meets, meets matches those parameters, then we're going to say yes, true. We want to see that line. Otherwise, we're going to say false and then end. So that's going to say, what it's going to do is you come across here, it'll say, was this the change? No change. Um, so this would be say false, 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 false. If this was changed, then it would say, okay, yeah, this is a change. True. This was the one that selected. This is true. False, 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 false. And even over here as a change, we'll say false. But because we have this max, it will pick of all those values. It's going to pick the true, which happens to be alphabetically. It's the max. And if you had a one and a zero, true would be selected as well. So that works out nicely. And so we will show that item. And we're going to bring that onto the filters. And we say false right now. So we'll need to come here. So nothing shows up. Let's click this. And now we'll come back to the price charge, price chart, edit the filter, and we'll select true. And so now it shows us the two items that had a change, or the three items that had a change. With them overlapping, it's sometimes difficult. Here's the decrease. Now here is where the magic is gonna happen. When you select that again, look what happens. Because on the dashboard action, I said, when we clear it, we want to set the value to the first of 2020 of 2000. Now, the key here is setting it way outside your date range. Maybe it's way out in the future. You could say 115000 or 111900. The key is you set it way outside the realm of possibility so as your your dashboard will last for, you know, years to come. When it says 112000, that's not even in the data set. So there's no item that is going, it's going to be true for that formula. So let's come back here. Look at this parameter. I mean, this uh, fixed function. So we need to add something to our if then statement that says, hey, if it is this 2000, show everything. Okay, so we, we're going to get an error, and it's because I always make this mistake. I always type this in as a string, so we need to change this to a date. So now we have this as a date. Um, oh, because I don't have the else if. Now the formula should work. We'll hit OK, and now all the the prices will show up, all the parts will show up. And that is how you can toggle use, using parameters and your bar chart, you can use this to toggle or reset your filters. I hope you'll check out these other cool videos that I've selected for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below.